Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by and seeing what I'm up to. My name is Nikki B, and finally we are on to how to analyze people. <laughs> Chapter 1 How to Analyze People Perceiving other people's feelings and thoughts is an important skill that helps you navigate interpersonal relationships. Every human being is different, but we are all wired the same way at the core level. Here, we start by recognizing subtle clues for a moment. 1. Establish baseline. I know people. To be able to read someone really, you need to know them well. Knowing someone personally makes you more about what their likes and dislikes are, what their common habits are, and what is not necessarily spoken or otherwise I know a lot. Based on one person's opinion, as well as some encounters with others, for example, you might have a friend who is generally very uncle. If so, their fear may not be a sign of lies or tension. When you meet them on the street, common sense makes them nervous or anxious, disagreeable. They have exciting feet. Pay attention to the habits of others. Do they always maintain eye contact? Does your voice change when you are nervous? How do they send it when they are crazy? This will lead you to what you are looking for when trying to read them. Ask open-ended questions. When you are reading someone, you are watching and listening. What you are not doing is grab the conversation at the corner and guide it in your direction. So ask yourself question and get out of there. Sit down, relax, and enjoy the show. Open-ended questions allow them to speak more so that they can talk longer. It is best to ask for appropriate and appropriate questions. Saying, how are your family? may give you a messy, messy response that doesn't help you to evaluate better the information you are looking for. You may be able to collect more personal information than what book are you currently reading. Look for baseline conflicts. Something is happening to an ordinarily loving person who doesn't seem physically present and doesn't want to get close to someone with a 10-foot stick. The same behavior Boo Radley shows does not necessarily mean the same thing. If you collect how people behave in daily life, be aware of things that do not engage. If something seems to be missing, you need to ask why. At least, initially, they may be exhausted, fight against significant others, get angry by their boss, or have a small personal problem stuck in C. Do not assume that it reflects your relationship with that person before you know all the details. Work with the cluster. Looking at a single cue is not a reason to jump to conclusion. After all, someone may be leaning on you just because the chair is not comfortable. Try to get clues from their words, tone, body, and face. If you get one from each and have a lineup of all of them, it's safe to continue. But of course, a good way to check if you are right is to just ask directly. Please know your weaknesses. As a mere human being, you are mistaken like the Pope. If you see something pretty, you will like it. If you are wearing a finely tailored Italian suit, you will probably trust it. 
Are you? Necessarily? Humans generally think of dangerous people who are drunk, walking around the street and carrying knives. In reality, most psychopaths are attractive and act together. Note that it is virtually impossible actually to control. But if it is not necessarily the best or most accurate thing, the subconscious tells you to judge the book on the cover. Secrets of psychologists to read people as if they were open books. Surely you have wished more than once to be able to read other people's minds. Some are saved with the help of their developed intuition. But if you are not so perceptive, you only have one way out. Learn to decipher body language. It is no longer a secret that, with the help of nonverbal communication, we get 55% of the information. Alan Pease, the famous Australian writer, mentioned it more than once. Expressions of the face, gestures, and body movements can remove the mask from anyone, revealing their true thoughts and feelings. The wording of genial. Guru proposes you pay attention to the signals sent to us by the people around us without even knowing it. 1. Closing the eyes. If a person speaking with you closes his eyes, you have to know that he is trying to hide or protect himself from the outside world. This does not mean that I fear you. Rather, the other way around. He wants to take you out of his field of vision. You may have bored it already. Close your eyes and bam! You disappeared. 2. Protecting the mouth by hand. It is a vivid example that we all come from childhood. Remember how you covered your mouth with the palm of your hand when you didn't want to say something. An adult is the same. Some fingers, palm or fist, help us contain the words. Something we mask it with a feigned cough. 3. Biting the rings of your glasses. Is a friend of yours thoughtfully biting the rings of his glasses? Try to support and encourage him. Surely, you will be worried by something and at your subconscious level, try to feel safe, as in childhood with the mother's breast. By the way, a pencil, pen, finger, cigarette, or even chewing gum in the mouth also indicate the same. 4. Showing face. Many women use this gesture to attract the attention of men. Supporting the chin on the folded hands, we expose our face to show it as if it were the shop window in a store, as if we were saying, here I am, so pretty, admire me. Men should remember this gesture so as not to miss the opportunity to make a compliment on time. 5. Stroking the chin. In this way, the person tries to make a decision. At the same time, your gaze can be directed down, up, to the left, or any other side. He does not realize what he sees at that precise moment, since he is completely immersed in his thoughts. 6. Crossed Arms It is one of the most common gestures. It is not surprising that many people feel very comfortable with this pose. Since this gesture helps to isolate themselves from others, many times we use it when we are not comfortable with something. The crossed arms are a clear sign of the negative attitude of your interlocutor. 7. 
exposing oneself. This pose is more open. When a woman wants to like a man, she starts exposing herself by showing her best sides. She straightens to highlight her breasts and crosses her legs. The folded arms below are a clear signal of attention towards the interlocutor. 8. Leaning Forward When a person feels sympathy for his interlocutor and wants to have contact with him or her, he usually leans forward. At the same time, the feet may remain the same place, but the body advances instinctively. 9. Leaning Back If the person leans against the back of his seat, he makes it clear that he is bored with the conversation. You may feel comfortable in the presence of your interlocutor. 10. Toe, Heel Yes, Adults do too, not only children. This gesture indicates that the person is very worried. 11. Rubbing his hands. It is said that the hands convey what the head thinks. When we rub our hands, we usually express expectations or hope of some success in something. In other words, we make this gesture when we think about future benefits. 12. Handshake, glove. If your interlocutor greeting you grabs you with both hands, it shows that you can trust him. 13. Squeeze with the palm up. The palm up, covering the interlocutor's hand, indicates empathy but only if done at once. If the hands were already held for a certain moment, and then someone put the palm of the hand up, it may indicate their desire to show who is in charge. 14. Squeeze with the palm down. By supporting your caller's hand, it is as if you were talking about your willingness to help him. 15. Squeeze with a touch. With the available hand, the person can touch the forearm, elbow, or back of the person he is greeting. This invasion of personal space shows the need for communication, and the closer the body is, the greater the need. 16. Straightening the tie. Here, everything depends on the situation. If it is a man who does it in the presence of a woman, it is highly possible that he likes it. But, this gesture can also mean that the person does not feel comfortable. You might have lied or just want to leave. 17. Collecting non-existent hairs. It is thus called the gesture of repression. Most of the time, people use it to express their tacit disagreement. In other words, they do not openly express their opinion, but they certainly do not agree with what is happening around them. 18. Feet on the table. This gesture can mean many things. Bad manners, disrespect, desire to show off as a great boss or concern for your health. However, psychologists tend to believe that even if you feel very comfortable in this position, it would be better if you use it at home or in the presence of your family. 19. Riding the chair. A chair is not a horse, and its back, although in some ways it seems, is not a shield. In addition, it was made for other purposes. So many people are bothered by this way of sitting around, because, at the intuitive level, we feel a lot of aggression from the mounted person. 
Normally, dominant people use this position. 20. Playing with the shoe. Cross-legged is one of the most attractive female poses. And if we add to him, playing with the shoe half removed, we accentuate it even more. This gesture speaks of a relaxed and calm mood and serves as a kind of green traffic light for man. 21. Eye Contact The eyes are the mirror of the soul and a perfect instrument of communication. There, we can read all the feelings and emotions of the interlocutor. Lovers stare into each other's eyes, unconsciously waiting to see how they get bigger. And this shows a lot, because the pupils can increase in size up to four times, compared to their normal state. And, by the way, if the person gets angry, their eyes become like accounts due to the maximum reduction of the pupils. How to analyze a person by their photos. Have you just met someone, added you to their Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and are wondering what kind of personality you have? Do you want to know what message you give the world with your photographs on the networks? Since the arrival of the internet in our lives, the way we have to relate to others has changed radically. Now, we have space where others can see what we want them to see. The images we decide to upload to our social networks show much more than we imagine. An internet profile is a projection of what we want to show the world our desires, and even our insecurities. That is why, by making a correct analysis of the published photos, we can develop an accurate personality profile. Tell me, what profile picture do you have, and will I tell you how you are? What the profile photos indicate. When we choose a profile picture, whether it's for WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, we are choosing our cover letter to the world. After that election, there is a series of mental processes that arise to avoid giving an image that we don't want to give. For example, someone more introvert will have more difficulties in this process and they may not change their photographs very often. In extreme cases, these people hide behind anonymous profiles. Some elements that we can analyze from the profile photos are the following. Pose. People who are not afraid to expose themselves generally go out with open arms, calm and with full length or half-body photographs. However, a more reserved person probably has a more serious photograph with arms crossed and in a more closed plane. Facial expression. An open smile without touch-ups and head-on. They are usually self-confident, open and outgoing. A grimace may be a sign that we want to show naturalness, but deep down, we feel insecure and force ourselves to be funny in a photograph. The most serious people, or who use their networks for professional purposes, usually leave with half a smile, or with an expression without grimaces and sober. If we go out with more people, going out with many people in the photo can indicate a tendency to be sociable. They enjoy life more in the company, and a photo alone does not represent them. If it is a photo with our partner, 
Although the image we give on the networks about our partner is not reality, uploading many photos or having a profile picture with your partner does not imply anything bad or the contrary. A photo with our partner means that we have taken the step of showing the world who we are united with and who is part of our life. It is an old or childhood photo. These types of images indicate a strong anchor to the past. We may be going through a bad time and do not want to connect with it or we are simply afraid to move on in our lives. Photo color. Color is also a very important element. A black and white photo can be a sign of a melancholic, poetic, or introverted personality. On the other hand, bright colors usually express vitality and joy. If the photo is not of us, there are people who hide behind anonymous profiles, avatars of soccer players, celebrities, or cartoons. These individuals travel through the networks without interest to show their personality, either because of fear, insecurities, or because they do not like to show their lives to a very wide audience. The Psychology of Colors in Profile Photos The study of how colors affect our lives has also reached the analysis of personality. The tones we choose for our virtual presentation letter also show very characteristic features of us. Black and White Photos As we have commented previously, a black and white photo can be a sign of melancholy and artistic tendencies. Retouching a photograph with the objective of removing the shades can also indicate bad self-esteem and, as a consequence, certain insecurity when showing us the world. Photos with lots of colors. The strident photos with many shades and full of color, are characteristics of equally strident and striking people. Not only is it a sign of extroversion, but the striking colors also indicate the desire to attract attention and to have a certain presence in the lives of others, whether in the real world or on the internet. Photos with blue tones. Using cold tones, such as blue, can indicate two things. Either a corporate personality, sober and elegant, or a tendency to be a cold and calculating person. These tones do not invite you to delve into the personal depths of each one. Photos with red color. If this striking tone predominates in the photo, we may want to show the energy and passion we have in our day-to-day. -day. The use of warm colors denotes an intense, competitive, and sometimes aggressive personality. Half-face photos, meaning not showing our face partially can indicate two very different things. Mysterious Personality Half Face invites you to enter the profile to discover more. See what the person hides and reveal his personality. Disinterest in Social Networks A person who does not mind being exposed in social networks but, however, does not want to waste time on them. For this type of individual, a half-face photo implies that they have given the message that yes, that Facebook profile is theirs, but they also do not want to show their whole life on it. Back photo, meaning. It is possible 
that in the profile picture, we do not even want to face. The back photos reflect a certain level of resistance when having social networks and being active in them. In this type of photos, the face is not visible. Therefore, we hide our facial expressions from the world of the internet. On the other hand, a photo from behind can also mean that we have gone through a painful time and that right now we do not have enough courage to show ourselves in the face of a world as extensive as social networks. Finally, it is worth mentioning that although it is interesting to know how to analyze a person by their photos, each individual is a world a very intricate set of experiences and paths and that it is better to talk to a person if we want to know them thoroughly. Five major factors analyzing personality, according to Goldberg. Lewis Goldberg's personality theory is also known as the Big Five model. It stems from a variety of studies in which the excellence of a particular personality trait is repeated as a factor determining people's way of life. I have been talking about this model since 1933, but it was 1933 that was structured as a theory. The five main personality traits are identified by capital letters and are also known as main factors. The first is the element of O, openness to new experiences. The second is the responsibility of C. The third is E, or extrovert. The room is A, or kind. And finally, the fifth is N, or emotional instability. The letters from the acronym, OCEAN. Each one is like a god, but you can leave it to God. Miguel Serve. Similarly, each of these characteristics is made up of more specific characteristics. From this model, a variety of personality tests have been developed that can evaluate and measure how people have evaluated Let's take a closer look at the features and characteristics of the model. Openness to experience. One of the personality traits. Openness to experience, O, refers to the ability to find new skills, space them in life, and creatively visualize the future. Those who have this level at a high level are imaginative people who appreciate art and collaboration with others. They are also curious and prefer variations over every day. The opposite is people who have closed to an experience. They have never experienced before. The opposition characterizes them. This means that they prefer a guaranteed traditional one. They prefer strict routines because they take time to adapt to new things. They tend to be technical and tend to show little interest in abstraction. Responsibility or factor C. This dimension relates to self-control ability and the ability to develop effective ways of acting. It relates to the ability to plan, organize, and execute tasks. You must also be able to achieve your goals, keep on time, and maintain your goals and goals. People with high scores in this dimension are often seen as organized, reliable, and demanding people. Taking this personality trait to extremes can lead to over-perfectionism and even work addiction. They feel a great need to succeed.
extroversion, another personality trait. It has to do with having fun with other people's companies. People who have this most prominent feature feel comfortable when they are with others and act in harmony when they are in a group. They are good people working in teams, optimistic and enthusiastic. Along with others, they are like sea fish. There is an introverted person on the other side, and it is best to work alone. Often, you feel certain distrust and attention to others. They prefer a small circle of friends and are very uncomfortable with a large group. A. Factor. Kindness. Mainly related to empathy, those who show excellence in this personality factor understand, forgive, and calm with others. Demonstrate your ability to understand other people's needs and feelings. The people on the other side are in conflict. These are people who like discussion and debate and want to give their own perspective. Hostility is your brand. They can work well in activities that require demonstrations of competition and energetic attitudes towards others. Emotional instability or neuroses. It specifically talks about the ability or lack of ability that one has to overcome in the face of difficult situations. People who show a high level of this factor are characterized by unpredictable behavior. They do not maintain a series of actions, but the reasons are not very clear and their reactions are different. At the opposite end, there are stable people who remain attentive and modest in critical situations. They are quiet people who are relieved with the ability to handle difficulties and mistakes. Your emotional state is positive, even in the face of difficulties. Read people and see through. Honestly, wouldn't it be nice to be able to assess people with lightning speed and know immediately how to deal with the best? Which buttons do you have to press to reach what you want? You know instantly which kind of person you are dealing with and which behavior is likely to happen to you from a few perceptions. This knowledge gives you a huge informational edge. While the other person is still completely in the dark, not knowing the number of inferences on their personality you have already learned. Your ability to perceive what others have missed reading between the lines, after a few sentences, will allow you to get a clear picture of a person and place them in a grid that will allow you to predict the person's remaining attributes and preferences. In short, you can read people and see what really drives them. Would not that be an incredibly helpful skill? Just think about what this knowledge could bring you benefits. In which situations would you have the decisive advantage? In which situations could you have prevented so much? If you had already known in advance how a person would probably act, and with which people would it be much easier if you knew exactly how you should deal with them? We humans love to look for patterns in our environment and to recognize them. Scientifically, this tendency is called randomness error. It is one of the automatically occurring attention mistakes that cause us to perceive the reality a bit distorted. In a nutshell, he says that we assign meaning to random events that they do not have. They just happened completely arbitrarily. 
However, we try to make sense of everything, and therefore recognize seemingly reoccurrent patterns that help us to categorize events in our environment. Even though these categories often do not exist, and of course, we do the same with our fellow human beings and their behaviors. Of course, this has some advantages and disadvantages. Classifying people into categories makes their behavior more manageable and allows us to rate the unknown. This seems to be an inherent pattern of human behavior. Evolutionary conditionally was necessary to detect dangers early. Today, it helps us to be better at dealing with people and to assess how they will behave. It allows us to be one step ahead of others. Already in ancient Greece, the personality of the people was classified in the grid of the temperament theory. Similar to the personality types, according to Carl Gustav Jung, the Myers-Briggs type indicator, or the Big Five of the ocean model, which is often used in psychology today, people of every segment were given certain qualities. By recognizing some of these typical behaviors or characteristics, people can be assigned to a segment. Once assigned, one knows which other behaviors and characteristics the classified person is now statistically most likely to have and how best to deal with it. Of course, this knowledge has not only advantages, but also great disadvantages. Katja Voigt once said that in all the drawers that we humans entertain, unfortunately, only a sock is lost. This quote nicely reminds us that two hasty conclusions can often have consequences, and many things pass us because of our now active expectation filter. We should therefore play very close attention to whether the model used really allows me to assign other unerring drawers. In our opinion, the model mentioned above have some upgradable points that need to be considered when trying to categorize people. First, categorizing bothers us. We in the NLP are convinced that we can always only recognize tendencies. The world is not black and white. It shows in many shades. And so do personality traits of people. The second point is that we humans have the ability to change and evolve. Such an analysis is static in nature just as an exam is just a snapshot. A survey or questionnaire can capture our personality at some point in time based on a set of criteria. But because NLP itself is a dynamic model and we constantly calibrate our conversational waking ears and sharp eye in conversations and situations, we can easily perceive changes and deviant behavior. NLP's behavioral analysis is always up to date, and its users are aware that human behavior is constantly changing. But they have the ability to respond flexibly to these changes. Also, Many analysis models overlook the fact that human behavior is very context-dependent. I can take the helm in a situation and lead a group safely to the desired point. Likewise, in a different context, I can just sit back, wait, 
and see what the others do, and talk and engage only when I have a clear picture of the situation. Just because I got things going in a context and was virtually the doer, does not mean that I do that in any other context, let alone that it always makes sense. But how can I analyze and read people and their behavior with NLP? The model we use is called MBC, Meta Behavioral Coding. It is our own creation and combines the best elements of some well-tested and working analysis models. These include, for example, the meta-programming from NLP, which is derived from it specifically for the working context of Dr. Med, Roger Bailey, derived lab profiles language and behavior profiles, and some analysis tools used in profiling the military. With MBC, we use a framework that allows us to incorporate human behavior into 20 facets. On the basis of the different characteristics and metaprogram combinations, we can assess ourselves and our counterpart very precisely and derive action strategies. You already know one of the meta programs if the VACOG model tells you something. This meta program tells you from the language of a human in which sensory channels your counterpart perceives his environment and thus also, in which sensory channels you should talk to this person in order to create a good basis for conversation and to prevent one another from talking to one another. Here, you can find more about the VACOG model. Meta programs themselves are therefore unconscious personality patterns and filters of our brain. These determine our behavior, how we are motivated, how we make decisions, how we value things, how we perceive our environment. Metaprograms thus help us to see how our counterpart is sorting his reality and what his subconscious personality patterns look like. Of course, these patterns have a very strong impact on how and what we talk about. From the structure of a person's language, MBC allows us to create precisely those unconscious patterns to hear and to get insight into the personality. A small example, Marcus and Christina have just a small disagreement at a meeting. Marcus says, Before we start, we have to rethink our decisions and analyze together whether we have thought everything through. We cannot risk external factors bugging us. Christina says, Thinking even more does not make sense. We finally have to get started. We're running out of time. We will already be able to handle the external factors when the time comes. Here, different metaprogramming meets, which causes conflicts more frequently. We're talking about the metaprogram proactive or reactive. We want to introduce you to this today. Proactive people are action-oriented and take initiative. They want to do something. The activity and the action are in the foreground. Precise analysis of the situation and the most accurate balancing of all available alternatives usually leave it to others. Much can only be considered for them once you have started. They assume that they have a handle 
on what happens and can influence environmental factors through their behavior. In everyday life, they are often referred to as makers, as they initiate many ideas and take the first steps. This is helpful when an action is required. In extreme cases, the quick start and initiate actions can also happen rashly and anger other people. It may seem that they act like steamrolling and could have prevented some with a little more thought in advance. Leave reactive people to take the initiative to other people. Situations have to mature for them to make decisions. They like to let things take their course in order to see what impact this has on them. Situations want to be understood and analyzed before an action is taken. Reactive people also need to be completely sure that they have considered all alternatives. They see themselves in the area of the tension of external influences and find that their behavior is influenced by environmental factors. In everyday life, they are often referred to as analyst or thinker. They provide valuable solutions and sharp analysis of problems. The honor of putting the first stone but may like to take another person. In extreme cases, this meta program can lead to an analysis loop, as there is always new input to analyze and understand. There is no action at all until it is too late. Sometimes, other people also perceive reactive people as passive because they spend a lot of time waiting and contemplating. This can also make them passengers of their own lives. So, you realize that both metaprograms have their advantages and disadvantages. None is better than the other. Depending on the situation or task, one expression can prove to be more advantageous than the other. Just ask yourself what expressions Mark and Christina have and how you can recognize them. How do I know which characteristic my counterpart has? Proactive Is very active in body language and movements linguistically noticeable by short, sometimes incomplete sentences, has problems staying calm for a long time. Typical sets of proactive people. What are we waiting for? Here we go! Now it's time to get started. Let's get started. Reactive. Tended to lean back more often or in a classic analysis posture, speak slowly and in longer nested sentences. Longer inactive phrases are no problem. Typical sentences of reactive persons. Let's look at exactly what we are dealing with here. We should think about that again before we do something. Let us also listen to other opinions on this topic. How can I use these patterns? Proactive people can be very well used as motivators and initiators of actions. They get things going and start where others are still thinking. But when there is a longer standstill, they become impatient and try to get things moving. They can help get an otherwise reactive team going and prevent over-analysis. Reactive people are very good analysts. They weigh, want to understand, and act thoughtfully. 
especially in situations that need to be controlled in the background or in an advisory capacity. It is recommended to use reactive persons. They can give proactive doer a clear direction and prevent important things from being overlooked in a hurry. While the other one is starting to work, they can analyze further in the background and gradually work out new input. How can you best deal with proactive slash reactive people? If you realize in a group process that proactive members are getting impatient and getting started, but the more reactive ones do not feel ready and need more time, then you can intervene very simply in this process. Split tasks and share the group is the magic formula. Give the proactive something to do. Let them either fulfill smaller sub-goals or tasks that have already been agreed, or give them tasks that need to be done either way. With them, you talk best about what has to be done and done. Once you've told them that, you do not have to worry about anything anymore. The tasks are done independently and quickly. Thus, you give the reactive persons the time and opportunity to continue important analysis processes and give them the security they need. You give them to understand that this process wants to be carefully considered. With them, too, it can help to use partial goals or milestones to make the analysis more precise and faster. Here it is important to set clear deadlines and execute them in order to prevent rethinking. This way, the situation with Marcus and Christina can easily be resolved. Both are focused on a common goal, and Christina can get started, while Marcus can calmly devise strategies to tackle external factors. Of course, you explain their tasks to the two ineffective speech patterns that satisfy their metaprogramming. Speech patterns that you can use to link to them include Christina, do, do, get started, act, now, Marcus, Think, weigh, think, analyze, wait, act, when the time is right. What brings you now, MBC? <coughs> In a nutshell, you can read carefully from the language of your conversation partners and recognize what they need and how they tick. So you know how to explain something brain-friendly in their language, so that it makes sense to them intuitively and sounds good. You do not have to rely on a static personality analysis. You have the ability to calibrate your opponent's tendencies with a proven and simple grid at any time and in any context, and so have clear action strategies for you. Imagine, you are in a discussion and know what arguments will convince. In a negotiation, you realize how your demands are being accepted. What if you have to sell something and know exactly how to raise the need for it? Whether you want to motivate, lead, understand, or respond to someone, you will notice a noticeable difference and be able to prevent much in advance. How to influence people. When we need to convince someone, we can use many techniques. Obviously, if we make a good proposal, 
We have valid arguments, and what we want to do is a win-win. It will be easy to convince our interlocutor of our interests. But apart from the content, there are some small tricks that we can use to influence the people we talk to and achieve our goals. The way we talk, our attitude, and know-how to handle the conversation can be the key to getting a favorable response to our interest. 1. Smile A smile on your face is the first thing we have to do if we want to influence people. When someone smiles, conveys happiness and well, and we all like to feel good. When a proposal is made with a smile on our face, we are more predisposed to accept what they are asking. 2. Take advantage of fatigue. When we are tired, we don't feel like arguing, and we are more willing to say yes, even if they leave us alone. Colts know this perfectly. Therefore, the sessions where you brainwash are always long and exhausting. They know that a tired person has low defenses and is more willing to obey and accept how true what you are saying. 3. Make the ball. The ego is one of the weak points of all people. We all like to be told how good we are, and we are more willing to serve a person who makes us feel good. It is not easy to flatter without it noticing. So, if you're beating someone to convince him, do it in a subtle and credible way. 4. Tell him many times, yes. If you want to influence someone, let them say yes. When in a conversation, we say many times yes, our brain understands that we are in tune with the person with whom we speak, and the inertia of responding that if it can be a good tool to get us to respond affirmatively to what we want. Cold door commercials are one of the strategies they use very often. Do you want the best for your family? Yes. Do you like to save on the fixed expenses of your home? Yes. Do you live in this address? Yes. Do you like things to work correctly? Yes. Do you want me to make a special offer for you? Yes. Make the ball. And let us say many times, if they are two of the basic techniques of commercials, another day I will write on this subject. 5. Do not take the reason from your interlocutor. Showing someone who is not right in what he says, and that if you have it is a good strategy to feel good and have the feeling of having won the argument. But it is not a good strategy to influence another person. When we argue, most of the time, we end up curling ourselves even more in the position we defend. If you want to influence another person, you better not discuss and ignore the negative arguments of the other person. This strategy is one used by all politicians in our country. 6. Extra trick. Use your voice well. The voice is a key element. When it comes to influencing others, <laughs> there are four aspects of the voice to consider. These four elements, which make us perceive a certain voice differently, are intensity, tone, timbre, and duration. On the union of all parties, it will depend on a voice being more or less persuasive. 
The ideal formula to be persuasive with our voice would be like that. Medium strong intensity, serious tone, open bell, and medium fast duration. And that's where we're stopping today. Thanks for hanging out with me, Nikki B. The long first chapter. All righty, guys. Take it easy, like, share, and subscribe.